Dr. Diane Ezel, group leader for the Nuclear and Extreme Environment Re Measurement Group at Oak Ridge. She has phenomenal instrumentation in the leadership role with NEMS to develop the MSTDB or the Molten Salt Thermal Properties Database. She has a PhD in electrical engineering from the University of Tennessee. Dr. Ezel, you now own the mic. Today, I'm going to be presenting on behalf of Jake and John on some of the work that they did this last FY at Oak Ridge National Lab. I also want to recognize uh, Shane Henderson and Rob Lefave put a lot of time into developing the framework to interface the database with the NEMS ModSim tools. The MSTDB or Molten Salt Thermal Properties database contains model and model parameters that represent salt solution properties as a function of temperature and the salt composition. So there's two databases, as, as Chris mentioned, there's a thermochemical and a thermophysical database. This morning, I'll be talking about the thermophysical property uh, database. So looking more in depth at the thermophysical property database, the first version of the database is finalized and should be available for open access soon, we hope. Several thermophysical properties are captured in this database, including the melting and boiling temperatures, density, viscosity, thermal con conductivity, and heat capacity. Currently, there are 62 entries. The first goal is to understand the binary at the detailed level, both through literature as well as experimental data. Patricia mentioned that there are multiple national labs generating this experimental data that will be incorporated into the database. Then this becomes the building blocks for more complex systems. We expect the systems to be multi-component. However, physical experiments are limited and could have difficulties characterizing these salts. The database is a good scoping tool that can validate interesting compositions of the 62 entries, how they break down across pure binary ternaries and quaternaries. This database is also a good tool to evaluate which properties require further investigation. For example, thermal conductivity has very little data from either experiments or theoretical studies. This directly impacts the experimental work scope that we're focused on at Oak Ridge for FY22. So we will be focusing on viscosity and thermal conductivity. And you can see here four of Oak Ridge's benchmark thermophysical experiments. We have a lot of other, I would say, research level experiments, but these are our benchmark experiments that we use to generate the data. I do want to note that these systems generate binary data, justifying the need for modeling and simulation of more complex systems like ternaries and quaternaries. We wanted to evaluate pure salts to generate this roadmap. Here you can see a table of the salts that were evaluated. The color scheme is important because it gives you an idea of what immediate, near-term, and long-term goals are to generate the experimental data. These goals were determined by measurement capabilities, but also industry needs. We've discussed in depth with the other national labs what their experimental capabilities are before you know, generating this table. So you can find uh, much more detail uh, on the roadmap in this milestone that I show here on the right-hand side. Looking specifically at the characterization data of the salts that are impactful for research developers, you can see there are major gaps that need to be addressed through testing. So Patricia showed these tables a little bit earlier, and I, I added a little bit of color to them to make it very obvious. Note that the density data is very prevalent, whereas viscosity and thermal conductivity are lacking. In fact, only two systems have data for all four characterizations that we're using to build this database. So how do we model from literature and experimental data? Using the pure and binary components and modeling binaries based on the pure components, you take pure components and binary models to mix and match and make multi-component extrapolations. We use the uh, Red Lick Kister expansion and uh, here you can see the equations for density, viscosity, and thermal conductivity that we use actually in our database. Let's look at an example. Reviewing the lithium fluoride, thorium fluoride pseudo-binary, uh, you can see the density and viscosity data shown in these two plots. These plots are generated by applying the red lit kister expansion and then curve fitting the literature data. So visually you can see that it's a pretty good fit. So this is a simple system to start out. This is how we build our into complexity. 
Another example of this is the magnesium chloride, sodium chloride pseudobinary. You can see the density and viscosity results shown here, purely based on data from literature. The dashed lines are the ideal solutions missing the expansion, whereas the solid lines, this is the data generated using the red lit Kister expansion with fit. So you can see it's just a much better fit overall. So now if you just look at the density of sodium chloride, potassium chloride, uterine chloride pseudo ternary, again, we're building complexity. We first evaluate each binary subsystem, and you can see that the density of each binary subsystem in each of the three plots shown here, pretty good fit. But now if you combine those subsystem models without any additional parameters, just using those building blocks, you can see here that we get a good extrapolation of the behavior in the pseudo ternary space. We show an example of the equation here. A second example of this would be the sodium chloride, potassium chloride, uranium chloride. Again, this is just the density plots of each of the subsystems. Dashed line being the ideal, the solid line being the expansion with fit, and it, it's, it's a good fit. Another way to visualize this, if you did a 3D visualization instead of a 2D plot, we extrapolated the binary to ternary, again, with no additional parameters, and you can see that the 3D visualization of the density, and here we overlaid the experimental data points from literature with the 3D fit, and you can see it's a pretty good agreement overall um, from three different angles of this same plot. Since the data overlays so nicely with the 3D visualization, this is a great validation of this expansion and curve fit technique. Shane and Rob actually put a lot of time and effort into making this database integrate well with the NEMS tools available. Uh, application programming interface uses that data uh, from the database to integrate with the tools for multi-physics, multi-scale calculations. There will be a FY21 milestone report available soon through OSTI, and again, that talks about this application programming interface in more detail. Well, you saw that the thermophysical property database uh, contains both data as, as well as models, um, and it will be open source and available for anyone, not just the national labs. The inputs to this database are based on pure components and binary mixtures, but the modeling enables the extrapolation of more complex systems limited by physical testing. So if you need to go to a higher temperature than our physical apparatuses allow us to, or you have a complex salt system that maybe uh, your lab space doesn't allow you to have beryllium or uranium or plutonium or what have you, you could rely on this modeling and simulation tool to investigate those uh, salt systems. And then finally, the interface developed couples the database with the NEMS codes for multi-scale multi-physics modeling and simulation.